Shalom, this is Anayahu. Uh, I'm making this video uh, because I would, like to, I would like to discuss some of the arguments used by atheists against the existence of God. Now, the point of this video, I am not trying to prove a specific deity being the one we need to worship or the existing, okay? I'm not trying to prove that my God is the true God. I'm not, in this video, that's not what I'm trying to prove. I'm just trying to prove, well, not, in this video, this is like sort of a, one of m many videos I might do about atheism, but, so in this video, I only seek to pretty much uh, demolish the arguments of the atheist against the existence of God. Now, it seems a lot of their arguments are against a specific god. Their arguments are generally towards the god of Christianity or uh, monothe uh, a certain kind of religion, okay? That's not the point of this video. My, my point is just to show how those arguments in and of themselves cannot work to disprove the existence of a, of a god. I believe that a god has to exist. Uh, no matter, um, basically, um, I respect, I, former atheists have realized the logic of this and have become deists. Deists believe that there is a God, but that he has totally left the world. Now, I disagree with that, but that's an honest that's an honest uh, answer when you look at the evidence, the very clear evidence, the logic that require for there to be a deity or God. But, you know, even if you went to deism, you at least, I believe if you are honest and open-minded and you look at the evidence and logic, you have to come to a conclusion that there is at least one God. Okay? Um... So now, with that said, I'd like to discuss the specific arguments that atheists will use to disprove the existence of God and then point out their flaws and show how that doesn't do prove anything. So, um, so let's go... I, I'm on Wikipedia here, so there's probably a lot more arguments that Wikipedia hasn't covered, but um, at any rate... Alright, um... Okay, so we're, we're under here uh, for Wikipedia, it says empirical arguments. Now I'm going to use, um, I'm going to go to the first one. It says, the argument from inconsistent revelations contests the existence of, of the deity called God as described in scriptures, such as the Jewish Tanakh, the Christian Bible, the Muslim Quran, Hindu Vedas, or the Baha'i Actus by identifying apparent contradictions between different scriptures within a single scripture or between scripture and known facts. To be effective, this argument requires the other side to hold that it, its scriptural record is inerrant, or at least to assert that a proper understanding of scripture gives rise to knowledge of God's existence. Okay, so the reason that this argument isn't valid, well, it could be valid to disprove a specific deity, but not, in general, the existence of a deity. Okay? Um, further, uh, inconsistent revelations, uh, it only is true if all of them are revelations from that one deity. If, if the, um, if the Quran is the true revelation from God, then any other, re any other book that claims to be a revelation, that doesn't necessarily mean it is a revelation, okay? So there, there isn't... Just because two books that claim to be revelations from God um, contradict does not mean that they are both wrong. It just means that they can't both be right unless God is trying to deceive us. So we could even say that, that there could be a deception. What if, what if God is trying to trick us? You know, the whole idea is that you can't use these things to disprove a being, okay? Um, so, but I would say, if you can show, if you can show me, I, I consider scripture, the Bible, and other books that should be in the Bible, uh, to be scripture. If you can show me contradictions, 
like where it says in Wikipedia, it says um, contradictions between different scriptures are within a single scripture. If you can show me contradictions, then I would reject that book of scripture. Or if you could show me contradictions between scripture and known facts, I would reject that scripture. If you can show show me science and and show me scripture and show me how scripture contradicts what we have proven with science, then I'd, I would have to disregard the scripture if I was being fair and open-minded and honest in interpretation. But this does not disprove the existence of a deity, or in other words, the existence of a god, existence of God, okay? Um, the problem of evil, okay, that does not disprove the existence of a god. The problem of evil says, uh, it contests the existence of a god who is both omnipotent and omnibenevolent by arguing that such a god should not permit the existence of evil or suffering. Um, the, all these arguments that people do are good for specific deities. They are good to discuss for specific deities. But for in general, for the existence of a deity, it does not work. Because who ever said that the deity that exists has to be good? It could be an evil deity. It could be an evil god. The existence of God. God could be evil. So the problem of evil does not disprove the existence of God. It may, I don't believe it does, but it has potential here, just, you know, it has the potential, depending if it's a valid argument or not, we could look at that some other time, but for now we'll just say it has the potential to disprove a certain specific deity, one that is both omnipotent and omnibenevolent, but um, it cannot disprove the existence of a deity, of a god, of God, because who says that God has to be good? God could be evil. So, the problem of evil does not disprove the existence of God. Uh, the destiny, destiny of the unevangelized, uh, by, by which persons who have never even heard of a particular revelation might be harshly punished for not following its dictates. Again, this is not, this is the same thing with the problem of evil. What if the God is unjust, unfair, evil? I don't believe God, that God is, but we'll just say, what if, you know? So, the existence of God is not disproven a specific god might be disproven by that argument, but not a god. You cannot use that argument against a god. The argument from non-belief, again, what if the, the deist god is true? The whole, you know, or um, what if he has a reason for wanting people to not believe? I'm not saying that this, these are things are true, but what I'm trying to show you is that the, the arguments cannot demonstrate that no god exists. Only that it can only be for a specific god. Every argument I've seen is for a specific god and not a god in general, okay? The argument from parsimony uh, contends that since natural theories adequately explain the development of religion and belief in gods, the actual existence of such supernatural agents is sur sur superfluous and may be dismissed unless otherwise proven to be required to explain the pheno phenomenon. Um, this actually might be a good argument Although, I would look at the, the uh, later part and say, uh, it says, and may be dismissed unless otherwise proven to be required to explain the phenomenon. I would say that the existence of a god, at least one, is required to explain certain phenom phenomena that are required. I'll get to, to that in another video, but for now, I'll just say that, that, that is a sufficient, that's a sufficient argument against the existence of a god. That, that's a valid argument. So the argument from parsimony is a valid argument, okay? But all the ones I've just read earlier are not valid arguments against the existence of a god. Um, the analogy of Russell's teapot argues that the burden of proof for the existence of God lies with the theist rather than the atheist. That's not even an argument. That's just... Uh, um, that, that's not even an argument. I'm not even going to address that because that's ridiculous. Who cares? Who cares what the burden of proof lies? It doesn't matter. That doesn't prove the existence of God, disprove the existence of God. So we're just going to um, ignore that one. Um, the ultimate Boeing 747 gambit is a counter-argument to the argument from design. The argument from design claims that a complex or ordered structure must be designed. However, a God that is responsible for the creation of the universe would be at least as complicated as the universe that it creates. Therefore, it too must require a designer 
and its designer would require a designer. Also, ad infinitum, the argument for the existence of God is then a logical fallacy with or without the use of special pleading. The ultimate 747 gambit points out that God does not provide an origin of complexity. It simply assumes that complexity always existed. It also states that design fails to account for complexity, which natural selection can explain. Okay, um, this is a good argument to... Uh, Alright, here, here, here's what I think of this argument. Um, the For complexity, I, I think we have to, if we're honest, we have to agree that somehow complexity has always existed. It, it can't just have popped into existence. It has to have always existed. There has to be something that was always there. Um, so, um, I believe there has to be some kind of something that is running the design. It can't be chaotic, okay? There has to be a order. Now, is the order itself, um, is the order itself, uh, what do you call it? The order itself always existing or it, is um, is part of the order a divine being existing and a god existing? Um, it could be. Uh, this argument really doesn't disprove the deity of the existence of a deity, existence of a god. It just dis it just counters the argument from design, showing that the argument from design is not credible uh, in what it tries to do. Uh, so now we'll go and discuss the omnipotence paradox. Uh, once again, the omnipotence paradox, uh, that's a specific deity. Who says that the deity has to be omnipotent? So that's just a definition, that's just a flaw with that specific deity. Uh, a non-omnipotent entity could be, could exist and be God. Alright, so that's not a good argument. Um, another argument suggests that there is a contradiction between God being omniscient and omnipotent. Again, that is a specific argument against a specific deity. We're talking about, in general, a, the existence of a deity. Um, problem of evil, I mean, excuse me, the problem of hell. Uh, again, a specific deity, not the existence of a god. So, the argument from free will contests the existence of an, of an omniscient god who has free will. Um, okay, again, that is a... Um, that's the, exi the uh, existence of... A specific god that it's trying to disprove that can be used to say all gods cannot exist uh, okay because some people don't believe in a, an omniscient god so this argument fails uh, it could be used for a specific god but not for gods in general um, how much time do I have left okay I have a little bit of time left um, um, the transcendental argument against the existence of God contests the existence of an intelligent creator by suggesting that such a being would make logic and morality contingent, which is incompatible with the presuppositionalist assertion that they are necessary and contradicts the efficacy of science. A more general line of argument based on this argument seeks to generalize this argument to all necessary features of the universe and all God concepts. To be honest, I'm, uh, they were that a little funny so I'd have to look at it to kind of understand exactly what they're saying but it seems once again to be a specific deity that they're trying to uh, discredit so again that doesn't that doesn't hold because we're not talking about specific deities we're talking about the existence of a god um, counter argument against the cosmological argument takes its assumption that things cannot exist without creators and applies it to God setting up an infinite regress this attack the premise that the universe is the second cause after God, who is claimed to be the first cause. Um, this is a very ridiculous argument because both positions have to admit that there has to be an uncreated creator, okay? Whether, whether it be something that is not a God or something that is just energy, there has to be something that has always existed uncreated that creates something else. Because then it has to be a starting point. With the with the infinite regress, there would be no starting point. So we would have never gotten to where we are right now. Okay, so um, so with that, that's uh, countered. Um, and I just realized I'm right near the end of my 15 minutes. I'm gonna make another video discussing more of the arguments of atheists. Uh, thank you for watching this video, and shalom.
Shalom, this is Nayahu. This is a second video about atheism, and in this video I wanted to just, uh, finish the discussion of the arguments of atheists used against the existence of God and show how those arguments are not credible in any way. For a, for a non-specific proof against the existence of a God. Um, so in this, uh, the theological non-cognitivism as used in literature, usually seeks to disprove the God concept by showing that it is unverifiable by scientific tests. Whether or not that's true, I believe it's clear from science that gods do exist because my definition of God is different than your definition, the traditional definition. What I view a God as is something that has a soul and spirit, or in other words, because I know you guys don't like those terms, but really what that means is something that has a mind, a being that has a mind, is a god, okay? So, since we have minds, therefore, since we exist, means we're gods, therefore, gods exist. That right there, that's science right there for you, okay? Science shows, proves that minds exist, and therefore, we exist, therefore, gods exist, and, I believe, I can show you a little bit later, that an uncreated mind has to exist and therefore um, therefore a uncreated God has to exist. At any rate, we'll get to that later. But I've just proven that that argument is false. Okay? So we'll go to the next one. The atheist existen existentialist argument f for the non-existence of a perfect sentient being states that if, a, if existence precedes essence it follows from the meaning of the term sentient, and a sentient being cannot be complete or perfect. Again, this is a specific argument against a specific deity. We're not talking about specific deities here, we're talking about, generally speaking, a deity. Since we're deities, we're, we're gods, we... Excuse me, I don't, I don't consider deity and god to be the same, but according to the dictionary, they're the same. But So I should say, we are gods. Um, and so it's clear we're not perfect or complete, therefore this argument falls apart. Uh, it only can be used against a specific, be a specific god, not in general godhood. Okay. Now, what I define as deity, I define uh, deity as a god that is worshipped. Okay, that's a deity. But a god that's not worshipped, they're not a deity, but they're still a god. Okay, we are gods. That are not worshipped. Now, some humans are worshipped, but the ones that aren't are not deities. Okay. Um, and you, someone can claim to be a deity, and in someone's mind, they're a deity. But just because they are, does not mean that they actually are a deity. Okay. So, the next one is the no reason argument tries to show that an omnipotent and omniscient being would not have any reason to act in any way specifically by creating the universe because you would have no needs, wants, or desires since these very concepts are subjectively human since the universe exists, there is a contradiction therefore an omnipotent God cannot exist again, it's a specific God you're arguing against stop doing that, atheists argue against the idea of Godhood in general, okay? Your, your whole belief system, atheism, is contingent upon no gods existing. But you keep spending and wasting your time arguing about a specific god, specific deity that does not exist. The, the point of your belief is whether or not a god exists, not a specific god. So just stop arguing about that, because that doesn't prove your beliefs at all, okay? You're, try you're trying to justify not being a Christian, not being a Muslim, not being a Jew, things like that, not being a Hindu, Buddhist, but your justifications for that do not justify your belief that there is no God, okay? So you really need to have a better argument here than just... I don't, I don't, I've never really seen an argument for atheism that has gone against the existence of a God. Only they all, every argument I've seen against a specific God, 
which is ridiculous. It doesn't make sense. Um, th that's not what atheism is about. Atheism clearly says no God exists. So stop trying to argue against a specific God and start trying to argue whether or not an, a God exists. All right. Um, again, your idea here, the no reason, is that omnipotent and omniscient being. If you deny one of those two things, you don't have a problem. Or if you redefine what those mean, then there's not a problem, okay? The historical induction uh, argument concludes that since most theistic religion, religions throughout history and their gods ultimately come to be regarded as untrue or incorrect, all theistic religions, including contemporary ones, are therefore most likely untrue, such incorrect by induction, it is implied as part of Stephen F. Roberts' popular quotation. I contend that we are both atheists. I just believe in one fewer god than you do. When you understand why you dismiss all the other possible gods, you will understand why I dismiss yours. Again, that is ridiculous. That's a specific argument against specific gods. Even if you can never know who that god is, the idea is, can we demonstrate from logic that a god has to exist? We, maybe we can't, I believe we can, but maybe we can't, hypothetically speaking, prove the existence, the, the existence of a specific deity. And that quote that I just read would be against that specific, those specific deities. But logic proves that a god has to exist. Even if you don't know who that god is, you have, you have to come to the conclusion, if you're honest and open-minded, that a god has to exist. That's why I respect the people that are former atheists that become deists, at least deists, because they realize, wow, a uncreated being has to exist. Their identity is not known to that that deist, but they still realize that that's the only thing that could be true. Um, so, again, this is also this idea of if a religion is, it's it's uh, very uh, subjective here because also this argument is saying. Um, if, you know, basically if people de determine what truth is. People do not determine what truth is, okay? Alright? People try to figure out what the truth is. But just because they, they all disagree about something does not mean it's not true. Alright? Now, I believe in geocentrism. But for the sake of argument, we'll just assume that heliocentrism is true, okay? Remember how everyone before heliocentrism believed geocentr geocentrism to be true? Well, not everybody, but in general, that's what everybody believed, okay? Let's just go with the assumption, your assumption, that the geocentrists were wrong. Everyone believed geocentrism was wrong. I mean, was correct. Does that mean that geocentrism is true? No. And then people stopped believing in geocentrism. Does that mean geocentrism uh, was wrong? No, not that. That doesn't mean anything. For not, for for example, let's say with heliocentrism. Okay, if people stop believing in heliocentrism, does that mean heliocentrism is wrong? No. Okay, because for, first of all, geocentrism and heliocentrism those are pretty much the only two options you have. So if both of those beliefs were to be stopped being believed, and people switch over to the other side, then which one's true? They it can keep going back and forth. So you see, the argument really holds no value. It doesn't matter what humans say is true. What matters is whether or not it's true. And humans can be wrong about what's true, okay? So this argument that religions have uh, are no, no longer believed to be true uh, proves that all religions cannot be true. And, yeah, so that's ridiculous. Um, how much time do I have left? Okay, I still have enough time. Uh... And subjective arguments, so f there's three of these. Um, uh, okay, these I'm not even going to discuss because they're, who cares? They're, they're not even, like, it's about, again, it, this is a specific argument to counter the, the claims of witnesses, okay? Um, um, well, okay, I'll just read them. The witness argument gives credibility to personal witness, contemporary, and from the past. Who disbelieve or strongly doubt the existence of God. Again, who cares what people say doesn't make it true. The conflicted religions argument notes that many religions give differing accounts as to what God is and what God wants. Since all the contradictory accounts cannot be correct, 
Many, if not all, religions must be incorrect. Agreed. That's a true statement. But many, if not all. But the truth is, um, you, the argument does not prove that all religions are incorrect. But I believe that most religions are very, very true. Not all religions are completely true, but I even believe Greek mythology and all the different mythologies, for the most part, are true. You don't understand how I believe that, but um, there is a lot of evidence for that. But that's not what this video is for. But anyway, so back, you know, I'll just say, you know, when someone says, I contend that we are both atheists, I just believe in one fewer god than you do. I believe in most of the gods that exist. But which one is the, the deity, the one that should be worshipped? Which one is the true, the most high god, okay? And I believe that only one is the most high god. But I believe pretty much most of the uh, gods do exist. Alright? So, that can't be used to discredit me. Anyway, um... And and the last one is dis the disappointment argument claims that if when asked for there is no visible help from God there is no reason to believe that there is a God again that's the um, you're assuming what God needs to do and that the God is good so a God could exist and not help you the God could be evil or he could have a reason for not helping you different things like that so your argument is really about a specific God and not about gods in general. All right, those are the existences, uh, the arguments that completely destroy the atheist arguments because they're all about specific, specific gods, and that's that help does not help the atheist at all. Now I'm going to read from something I wrote a while back, which I believe proves the existence of at least one uncreated god. Okay, and um, you don't have to, you don't. Um, how do I put this? Uh, yeah, so I, I, I believe I'll, I'll prove, be able to prove that, that the, at least one uncreated God exists. It could be more than one, but at least one has to. One that has always existed, okay? So he, I will read from my thing. Uh, okay. The nature of asking questions assumes you want meaning to your life. All the questions you ask imply you are seeking an answer. For no one asks a question unless they desire an answer. Answers to questions mean you want a reason. Asking a question therefore assumes an absolute truth. Truth exists. If truth does not exist, why are you asking a question? It does not make any sense for you to, to demand that which cannot be true. For as I have just demonstrated, asking questions shows you want an answer, a reason, and meaning to your life. But I ask you, can a reason exist without truth? Truth by its nature is one of the eternal principles. You cannot not have absolute truth. To make any claim is to affirm the nature of absolute truth. And what is the purpose of truth? A truth means nothing unless there is a mind to perceive it. I ask you, can meaning exist unless there is a mind that seeks it? As I have demonstrated earlier, absolute truth must always exist. It cannot not exist. Existence itself has a meaning. However, as I have just demonstrated, if there is no mind, there can be no meaning. But in order for truth to exist, existence must have the meaning of existence. But meaning can only exist when a mind exists. Therefore, because truth has to exist, at least one mind has to exist. Whoever this one mind is, it is what we call God. Or the deity. The Okay, it's a, it's a God, a deity. This mind is by nature necessary and one of the eternal principles. It is the only eternal principle, or not necessarily, but it is an eternal principle that is aware. Um, okay, so let's see here. So God is, so I proved that an uncreated being is a necessary and eternal mind. Uh, it does not make sense to object to this. Why? Because objecting to the statement that God, uh, uncreated being, um, must exist assumes that you believe absolute truth exists, but in order for absolute truth to exist, a necessary mind must exist. All I'm doing is simply giving this necessary mind a label, calling it God. Uh, I believe this is un undeniable proof that uh, God or an uncreated being ex 